Have you noticed how hard we've worked to earn your business? Is there anybody else that's worked this hard? On a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about taking action? From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Steik along here with Luke Acree. And Luke, we are excited for this interview because we're going to be talking about how to activate your prey drive. Yes. So if you don't know what that is, that is why you showed up for this podcast. We're going to introduce you to our guest in just a minute. But first, we would love it if you take a minute and subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts if you're not already subscribed and leave a review along with a comment just to know how we're, let us know how we're doing. Yes, we this, got we got our first one star review. We got our first one star. They didn't write anything. You know what was so ironic? I was like, come on, that? write something so we can improve. Don't just hit the one star. We recorded a podcast on that day talking about haters and how to respond to haters. And that day we got our one star. We review. got our one star. It hasn't even released yet. We got our <laughs> review. Now, but this week's featured review comes from R3B3X on Apple Podcasts. They say incredibly useful. Five stars. This podcast is a great learning tool for anyone in the business. A lot of useful uh, or usable advice, even better. And I will definitely be referring back to these for future use. So thank you, R3B3X, for leaving that on Apple Podcast. Today's guest is Coach Michael Burt. He is considered America's coach, having a unique blend of being a former championship basketball coach and a deep methodology of inner engineering people to produce at higher levels in the business world. Having written 14 books on his growth methodologies, Coach Burt has spoken all over the world and brings his training to an online audience through his Monster Growth Online Academy. Coach, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited. Man, we are excited to have you. I was sharing a little bit before we came on, but I want to let the audience know. So the first time I got the honor of hearing Coach Burt speak was at the 10X Growth Con. So everybody knows I'm a fan of Grant Cardone and you know mentioned him a lot, but went to the 10X Growth Con. And what's interesting when you go to conferences, a lot of times you go for the keynote, right? You go for the big names, they draw mm-hmm. you in. And full transparency, I'd never heard about you before. You came out and I remember being there with Steve, who's our CEO, yeah, Mike, a bunch of other people and just going, this blew me away. And I've been following you ever since, man. Really, really love your stuff, your motivation, but I love how tactical you are um, and how you bring it to tactics. So would love for you to just take just a few minutes and introduce the audience. Who is Coach Burt? How did you get into doing what you're doing? Yeah, I was a former women's basketball coach. And uh, a lot of my methodology was garnered really from 19 to 31 when I was trying to get people from all walks of life, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all diversities to win, right? To learn how to play at the highest level. But I, I was a deep disciple of Covey. And Covey wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Principal Centered mm. Leadership. And what he really introduced me to was how to tap into the whole person. And that methodology really separates me from a lot of people that are out there because there's a depth to it. There's a deep understanding of human nature. There's a deep understanding of how to inner engineer a person. So my background is very different than lots of people. I was a traditional athletic coach. I built the national championship basketball program, but I was always fascinated by the psychology really of activating the prey drive in, in people. And because I was a coach, everything was a formula. Everything was very methodical. Everything was very pragmatic. And so when I got the chance to speak at 10X, you know, I I really was an unknown person, but I felt like I'd been preparing for that moment my whole life, right? Mm. I I had been coaching people my my whole life. And it it was kind of just a moment for me to kind of come out and say, this is who I am. This is what I believe. Uh, Obviously, that was a huge turning point in my life because it opened us up to an international market we, we did a substantial amount of business and it kind of introduced me to a lot of key relationships I have today with some of the biggest people in the world. No, yeah. I mean, it, it showed, man, when you walked out on that stage and I think just a uh, principle that people can pull out and a golden nugget they can pull out is that one is it wasn't an overnight. It wasn't like you just prepared for that one keynote. That was years and years of experience put in there. But it also showed that you were just on your game. I wish people, I know the audience is not going to feel the same way I feel because they weren't there. But I'm telling you, the <laughs> difference was immense in that auditorium. It was crazy 
because of the motivation and tactics. And would love to kind of dive into this topic. You talked about prey drive, right? So we'd love to kind of hear your take because I feel this is something unique to you that you've developed. Uh, can you tell us a little bit what is prey drive? Well, prey drive is prevalent in animals, specifically dogs. A dog has a prey drive, which is the dog's ability to stalk, capture, and kill prey. And someone used that term loosely in a conversation probably three or four years ago to me. And I, I said, humans have a prey drive, right? Like it's really what I've been doing for 28 years, which is activating that prey drive. And I first did it as a championship basketball coach, now as a business coach. But that's really what my whole life has been about, which is flipping the switch. You know, and that's the title of the new book, Flip the Switch, How to Activate the Prey Drive in You and Your Team. So prey drive is an instinct to see something with the eyes, optically, or in the mind, the imagination, and have the persistence and intensity to pursue it. There are components to prey drive. It has to be activated. There has to be a persistence to it. There has to be an intensity to it. Then there are what I'm calling five activators of that drive. And that's really what the book is about. And I use those activators to try to help a person find another gear. And what person in America doesn't want to activate this drive, right? It is an instinct to pursue. It is an instinct to see something and go get it. It's an instinct to get up every day and, and, and really go out into the marketplace and try to win. And unfortunately, lots of people have either never found it or it's gone dormant. Or it needs to be reactivated on a a pretty consistent basis. Because when you study human nature, people start with good intention, i.e. their prey drive is activated. They, they, They fail to follow through for whatever reason, lack of discipline, lack of environment, lack of accountability. And then they experience guilt. And that guilt is associated with grief. So the ability to, to activate and reactivate your instinct, your prey drive to pursue your potential every day is a very important thing. Without this activated, it doesn't matter how you explain your service. It doesn't mm. matter how you sell. It doesn't matter how you follow up. It doesn't matter how you attract, uh, try to attract referrals because the reality is you just don't have the mojo to get up and go get it every day. And that's really what I'm trying to activate in people. Mm. So what is the prey? I mean, in this scenario, obviously the prey is uh, the goal. Is this only from a sales yeah. perspective? Is this from a, yeah. any, any goal that you would have in business? How would people apply that? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, prey is is what you. It's either what you see in your imagination. For example, three or four years ago, even when I was speaking at 10X, I talked about having greatness factories around the world. I put a picture of a greatness factory up. I had seen this vision in my mind of this cool city where people could exchange. There was podcast studios and dream incubators and auditorium and you know. And so that vision is now manifesting itself four years later. Because I'm sitting in the new greatness factory that we're designing, which is this really cool city where people come to to exchange energy, ideas, money, concepts. And so the prey in this case was me having the guts to pursue that dream of of something that I kind of put out into the universe three or four years ago. Because most people have dreams and they don't have the persistence or intensity to pursue those dreams. Mm. So they settle, they contract, they retreat. They just live kind of an ordinary life. And so I think a lot of people, when I come along, they will use that phrase, man, you activated that prey drive. You, you flipped the switch at me. Maybe that day when you saw me speak to 10X, that's really what I was doing. It's the cadence in which I do it. It's the packaging of concepts in ways that motivate people and they can absorb. It's the intensity and conviction. It's kind of all of these things roll up into one and in how I deliver my message based on my unique background that hopefully activates that prey driving people. Well, how do you like, can you walk us through like, how would one activate their prey drive? Because I know all of us, it's like the roller coaster of life and business. And there's sometimes I feel on top of the mountain. And then there's other times I feel in the valley. Like what are some of the, the things I can do to activate the prey drive when I'm in the valley? Well, first understanding the primary activators of prey drive is important. So Competition is an activator of prey drive. And competition is not always you're trying to beat someone else. It's a it's a fight. It's a game to win. It's a right. It's it, it may be you versus you. It may be you versus uh, s- another standard. It may be you versus this, you know something you need to prove to the world. Competition is an activator of prey drive. 
Fear of loss is an activator of prey drive. Mean fear of losing something. Could be status, could be money, could be position, could be a way of life, right? Like it's a threat to my way of life. Okay. I enjoy the way of life I have. I've worked hard for 28 years to build it. And and I'm and, and so so to keep it and maintain it, what do I do every day? I wake up and I sell. I wake up and I follow up. I wake up and I create. I wake up and I manifest because I don't want to lose it. So fear of loss is actually a big one for me. Environment is an activator of prey drive. So I'm really big into creating high prey drive environments that have high expectation, lots of energy, where people are performing at their highest frequency. Exposure is an activator of prey drive, meaning I'm around big time people. I'm learning. I'm growing. You know, if you could see where my office is right now, it's overlooking downtown Nashville. You can see Titan Stadium. You can see the river. You can see downtown. There's energy. There's That's exposure. Awesome. Like this place, when you walk in, it's like when you see it when I'm finished with it, the way I've designed it, it's not a conference room, they're dream foundries. There's the monster tank, there's the auditorium, there's the podcast studio. There, there so it's just really cool. Like when you walk in, it's like, all right. There's so much I'm, to I'm, that. There's so much to that. I think Steve, Steve Jobs said like people design beautiful things when working with beautiful tools. Mm. Like that's why they focus yeah. so much on making the Apple products well designed because it it right. creates that inspiration. Is the yeah, great... And, and, it, oh, go ahead. Well, and the final one would be embarrassment. And, and I use embarrassment differently than other people do, meaning I want you to look at where you are in comparison to where you're capable of and go, man, I'm playing so small. Like last night, I'm there with my wife. My wife turned 40 years old today. I'm, I'm 44 years old. And I told her, I said, man, we're getting, we're getting old. Like, like I, I mean, <laughs> now I'll be fifty. Like this is crazy. Like like we got things to do. We got dreams to pursue. We got places to go. We got people to help. Like 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 it kind of just sitting there, laying there in bed, kind of activated my prey drive. Like let's go, man. Mm. You're forty. I'm forty four, and I'm like we're getting close to fifty. She's like, no, you're getting close. To 50. <laughs> I still got I still got a decade. I just turned thirty nine. I feel that. I yeah. feel that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but here, here's my point, man. If there's something about that that triggered in me. See, just think about prey drive like this, guys. It is it is inside of you. I believe we're all, we have this latent and undeveloped thing. Now, what triggers it could be any or all of those things. It could be a conversation. It could be a slight. It could be a perceived rejection. It could be that somebody didn't believe in you. But to me, it really doesn't matter what activates it. I just need it activated. Now, once it's activated, the problem is I see, we coach about 500 and let's say 50 business owners a month that are in my coaching program, Monster Producer. And mm-hmm. that, that, those are people just getting started all the way up to people making millions of dollars. I also have major contracts with billion dollar companies that bring me in to be their coach. So I get large sample sizes. And so I can see what the problems are. And the problems are all the same. If, if, if when CEOs hire me, they're like, man, come in and activate the trade drive in our people. Well, I can do that. But if the structures are not in place to reactivate their prey drive, when I leave, the prey drive goes away because I'm the external stimulus. See, the high performers know how to activate their own prey drive. So when I wake up in the morning and my prey drive is not activated, there's certain things I do to flip the switch in me. It could be what I watch, who I listen to, how I exercise, I, you know, those type things. So I, so I don't need, I do need other people. But I don't need somebody telling me. I can I can say, okay, I need to flip the switch here and turn it on. And this is what I'm going to do to flip that switch. What do you do after the uh, the switch is flipped? I got to say, because you mentioned competition is one of the first ones. And we like we have some competition here in our industry that just sort of uh, flipped my prey drive <laughs> recently where I saw what they're doing. And I'm like, I'm talking to them. Man, I'm, I'm more motivated now to go out there and make sure that they don't, they don't get a little bit of what we've we've built, what do you do next? Once you have that prey drive activated, then what? Well, that could be too, fear of loss, fear of losing something and competition. Mm -hmm. Uh, What you do is you attack. See, this this is the reason the second and third component of prey drive is by persistence and intensity. Once you feel that threat, once you feel that somebody's encroaching on your, your turf, once you feel like somebody's taking something off your plate, then it's a matter of just getting in the fight, man. And doing it every day. See, I, I'm very regimented. I come in every day. We spend time prospecting for new money every day. We are relentless in our follow-up every day. 
if I wrote the book Million Dollar Follow Up, mm. we're relentless in engagement, we're relentless in doing events. Like, like during this cycle of time, a lot of those people that spoke at 10X with me, you know, called me and said, man, you're doing it. Like all of us, we kind of shut down during this period. You're just keep on going, man. Like, <laughs> like you're an inspiration to us because that's who I am. My prey drive is activated when I work the muscle. And when I work the muscle, it reactivates the prey drive. When, it, when the muscle goes dormant, then it's like I'm waiting on something to happen and I just can't handle that. I need to create. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an outside force. A person will not take action. Nothing happens until somebody is sold. And so to me, every day is about, you know, staying persistent and consistent in working the methodology. I have to ask you because you're a coach, right? And is is a huge aspect of getting that prey jive and that persistence and consistency. Because here's what I run into a lot is the person who is in the valley can't pull themselves out. They have the greatness in them. We all know that. We can see it. We want to try to activate that out of them. But it's like they're there because they they aren't persistent. They aren't consistent. It's like, so like, do you have a coach yourself? The, I'm, I'm curious because you're a coach, right? You do this as a profession. It, would you recommend that, hey, look, you're going to have to have an accountability partner to keep that persistence and that consistency? Because uh, that's where I feel like the disconnect, I think, for a lot of people is. Well, it, it is the entire disconnect. And this is why I think you need a good coach in your life. See, when I built my coaching program, I built it to have reactivator prey drive every every week, every Monday. So every Monday, I do a coaching session with that's available to all 550 of those people. About 150 show up every Monday. But the reason I built it so tight like that is because I know human nature. And human nature is to get excited, fail to follow through, and experience guilt. Right? That's human nature. I don't care who you are. Why do the best people in the world have coaches? Because of the accountability structure and reactivation of that prey drive. Most people cannot do this on their own. They need the help of another person. And so, yes, that is a cycle that I see every single day. I want to do it no matter what it is. I want to lose the weight. I want to get in better shape. I want to make more money. I want to change my life. I want to pursue my dreams, whatever. Okay. But most people lack the persistence and intensity to actually take that thought and see it through to its logical conclusion without the help of another person. You know, I mean, I can activate the prey drive. You can, you can have your prey drive reactivated by watching my videos. But, but that doesn't mean you know how to go do it. That doesn't mean you, you don't need that weekly accountability. It doesn't mean you don't need to have an environment of people that are pushing. You, um, you know, we have a division where we write books for people, a publishing division. Hmm. And I can't tell you how many people come to me because I've written, you know, I'm on book number 17 now. And, um, and I can't tell you how many people said I've written the book, but I'm only on page 15. I've looked, I've wanted to write it for the last five years, whatever the case. And we get the book done in 120 days. And they said, we come to you because we know it'll get finished. <laughs> wow. And we get finished because they just don't have the muscle. They have not, yeah. you know, when I spoke at 10X, it's one thing to be able to get on stage. It's another thing to be good enough on stage because you've worked the muscle for so many years, right? That you right. have something valuable to say. It's not like, it's like, it's not what you know, it's who you know, but, but there's another component. Once you get there, you better know. Mm. Because if you're not any good, once you get there, you're not going to get anything else. And I think a lot of people know how to get in the door, but because of their lack of working that muscle for years, they just don't know how to stay in the door. They're just not that talented. Yeah. What a great golden nugget of thinking of it like a muscle. Like I think we don't think about our business that way. We don't think about the things like, like even like your sales pitch, like that's a muscle that you're working every single day, like the prospecting, all that you're doing and, and realizing that if you like the gym, anybody who works out understands this. It takes so long to build the muscle and so fast to lose it. Like it is crazy. Like I'll, I'll, I'll be benching and then I'll take off two weeks and you can't, you're 30 pounds less you can put up. It's like great. Well, for me, people, maybe not for you, Josh, because Josh is laughing at me. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, don't you know. don't go to the gym anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that, I think that concept of everything you're doing in your life is a muscle that you're building. And what do you expect if you haven't built the muscle? What do you expect if you can't lift that block? because you haven't built that. So I guess let's uh, talk to you from a tactic standpoint. 
about follow-up because follow-up is something near and dear to Josh and I's heart. Like our whole company, Reminder Media, that's what we do. It's all about how do you follow up with clients? How do you build relationships? You have this whole system, the million-dollar follow-up system. And one of the things you say is that you can teach people how to generate, like I think it's 5.7 referrals on average per deal. Can you give us a little flavor of what that looks like and why activating the prey drive, if you implement this system, will will do that for you? Well, in today's world, we live in a world where people are very distracted. They're very distracted and pull apart. So what you're really doing in the follow-up is getting and keeping a person's attention. And that's hard today, right? Which is why you have to go seven to 15 touches. And I think there's follow-up to get a person's attention. There's follow-up to present an idea to a person. There's follow-up to close a person, there's follow-up afterward and engagement for referrals. And most people go one to two to three touches and then they give up. Now, I find it interesting that as I'm building out this greatness factory, I want to spend money with people to build out the offices, to do the things. And I find it interesting that I'm the one following up with them <laughs> when I'm trying to give them money. I'm like, like hey, an object at rest stays at rest. Look, I need to make a decision today. I need to decide today. I need help today. This is the world we live in. It's lazy. It's complacent. It's like, well, I'll just sit. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an outside force. You have to be that outside force. So in the book, Million Dollar Follow-Up, I talk really a lot about the difference between linear and nonlinear touches. And it's like boxing, right? It's like jabbing. Jabbing is a nonlinear. A hook is a, is a linear. Nonlinear is an indirect touch. And I may say, hey, guys, I've got three strategies I would use. I've used it for two different people. I've helped them make $2 million more million. This is the strategy and tactic I would use with you. That's a nonlinear touch. Okay? A linear touch is, look, have you seen enough to make a decision? I can't help you till you commit. But once you commit, I'm not going to let you fail. Are you ready to make a decision right now? Mm. Like I was on the phone earlier so, you know, in a sales call, and I just said, do you need to see more? Or are you ready to make a decision right now? That's a linear question. Mm. It's direct. They're like, we don't need to see more. We're ready to take action right now. Great. If I send it over to you right now, is there anything that would prohibit you from signing it? Because you want to do it right now. Yeah. Okay. Good. See, see what I'm doing now. If they said, I I haven't seen enough to make a decision, I may have a series of nonlinear touches to bring them back to their interest in that. And about every third or fourth touch, I would come with a hook. Okay. I can't. Are you ready to take action? Because I can't help you you take action. Once you take action, I'm not going to let you fail. So three to four nonlinear follow-up or touches followed by a linear touch that requires them to take, make a decision. That's right. So there's an art. How many times do you repeat that? I go seven touches. And then on touch number seven, I say, have you noticed how hard we work to earn your business? Is there anybody else that's worked this hard? On a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about taking action? (laughs) I love that. That's a great line. (laughs) You know what I love about that too, from just playing it back in from a sales principle standpoint, is you're not dancing around the bush. And I think what a lot of people do in sales is they think somehow they're going to manipulate that prospect into saying yes, instead of just being totally direct, like, hey, are you ready? Have you seen enough to take action? And when you take action, I'm not going to let you fail. Super direct versus trying just like, well, you know, we've had a lot of clients that have had a lot of success. What are you thinking? Are you thinking like it, everybody phrases it in kind of like a, I'm too scared to ask directly for the business. And that's just so direct to the point, sets the expectation. And in the end, people appreciate that. That's what gets people to buy. So yeah, then, if, you're, if you're a professional, right? So if I, you're a professional, why would you be hesitant to ask another person? Right. Well, it's the idea of, of so many people take the profession you know, uh, out of the sales professional. You know, they don't see it as a, as a profession to train in and, and be regimented. So what about the referral part? 5.7 referrals from every transaction. How do you get to that number? How are you getting those referrals from each transaction? What's the process? Well, I don't believe in customer service. I believe in <laughs> customer engagement. Hmm, love right? that, yeah. I, 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 I believe that referrals happen as a direct result of helping a person get to a much better place in their life. There is a transformation that takes place. Okay. And that does not happen just from serving the person. It happens from engaging with the person. 
So if I help a person write their first book, if I help them play at a higher frequency, if I help them think bigger, if I help them make a million more dollars, then that has drastically altered their life. If I touch them at a very deep level, they will go tell other people. And I always say, you don't need more money, you need more people because the people have the money. I believe in new associations and new associations are, you guys are introducing me to new markets today. But where did that association start? It started with you seeing me at 10X. Hmm. So, so my point was, if I wouldn't have been any good at 10X, if I wouldn't have affected you in some kind of way, if it wouldn't have been transformative for you, you wouldn't have followed me or watched my videos or invited me to your podcast. And that's kind of way, the way people need to think, is that when you have an experience, that experience will either be passive, lukewarm, a detractor, or in my, in my opinion, advocacy, meaning it was transformational for me. Like, like it was so good. I got to tell other people. Hmm. Okay. And that's how you get to the 5.7 approach. Now, that's a national stat used primarily in certain industries, real estate, coach a lot of real estate, mortgage insurance people. I think you should get four to six referrals from a good base of your clients. But if you study the law of diffusion, it tells me for every 30 people you service, 4.8 of those people will be innovators or early adopters, meaning they're probably most engaged. That tells me that out of every 350 clients you have, there will be roughly 52.8 who will be totally on board with you. Hmm. Those are the 52.8. Your raving the fans. Most yeah. Those are the raving fans. So that's why I told you I have 550 business people that I coach every month that are in Monster Producer. Roughly 150 of those are on my Monday calls. Now, who do you think is referring me the most? <laughs> those, <laughs> those 150. <laughs> Yeah. Now, we try to engage with other people like crazy. We engage with them. We want to know why they're not coming to class. We we call them. We text message them. We do calls every Monday. I do webinars. You know, we do everything we can to engage with people. Uh, and some people engage and some people don't. But there's very little chance I could change your life if you don't engage with me. Mm. No, it's so true, man. What you, what you put in is what you get out. But what I love about that is this whole idea that in your book of business, there are people, and this goes into the podcast we did on the 80-20 rule with what's his name, Perry Mar- Marshall. Mm-hmm. It's like literally in your business, there's going to be 20% of the people that if you find those people, if you engage with them, if you do an unexpected experience in a good way, they're going to become your advocates and they're going to drive 80% of your business. I love that. All right. So I got to ask you, man, um, is we ask everybody who comes on the show you know, that's successful. You obviously do things in your life to drive success. So as you look at your life, um, what are the routines that you implement um, every day that have helped you get to where you're at? You know, one of my routines is the way I start my days. I know that's very popular with a lot of people. Um, I try to feed all four parts of my nature by 8 a.m., meaning I feed my body, my mind, my heart, and my spirit to activate the trade drive in all four parts of my nature. So uh, spiritually, I'm a faith-based person. So I typically watch a 20-minute sermon every morning. Uh, I then work out pretty intense at a F45 functional fitness. And then I come home and see my family, my wife and two kids. That feeds my heart, my emotion. Then I listen to something on business on the way in. So that activates my mind. So by 8 a.m., I've already activated all four parts of my nature. I use Saturdays to study successful people, documentaries. Mm -hmm. Uh, When my mind is relaxed, I do take one day off per week. But when I work, I'm very disciplined about how I work. I do not participate in a very much low value activity. Most of my focus every day is on new money generation and how do we continually pursue big targets. So if you follow me around all day, I don't have a lot of time for small talk or wasted conversation or wasted movement. I'm very focused on hitting our sales targets. I'm very focused on, you know, becoming a nationally known person in the world. So I just don't mess around. I don't mess around a lot with low value activities. Now you can feel it. And if you follow, uh, which all of you should follow Coach Burt on Instagram, but if you follow him, you'll see it in his Instagram. Are you in, uh, getting into fitness from an investment standpoint or those? Uh, I've been following you on Instagram because I noticed, what is it, F45? Is that what you're getting into? Yeah, I did, I did make an investment in a local F45 to okay. see what I thought about that experience, see if I could inject uh, some of my sales methodologies into that. They came to me and gave me an equity position. That's awesome. Uh, in that gym. And, um, and I did invest some capital into it to try to get it going. It's a tough time to own a gym. Yep. It's a tough time to be involved in the gym, no matter how good you are. Uh, but it's been a great experience and I do love working out there. So I do see clear methodologies where my sales system could work for gyms around the country. 
Now, now I feel bad that I said I haven't been going to yeah. the gym. <laughs> Come on, man. I got to ask you too, like what, what preachers do you listen to? My favorite pastor is actually Jimmy Evans, okay. which is, was the mentor to Robert Morris, who wrote The Blessed Life. Uh, and uh, he's just the guy I resonate with. He's from Amarillo, Texas, That's straight awesome. talking. Uh, and he's big. He does a lot of stuff on mindset, insecurity, fear. And uh, so he's just the guy I resonate with. So I typically listen 20 or 30 minutes from him uh, every morning. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to check him out because I, I do similar. Similar. So I'll have to check him out. I'm not super familiar with them. That's great. All right, last question for you that we'll, we'll ask you is knowing what you know now, what would you go back and tell younger uh, Michael Burt, that high school age kid, what advice would you give them? I wish I would have had more uh, business and financial coaching. You know, from 19 to 31, I did, I, I studied businesses, uh, but I didn't have a business coach. I didn't really understand the difference between assets and liabilities. I had a lot of talent. I like, I was a level 10 person kind of stuck in a level four opportunity. Mm. And um, it was necessary though, for me to learn what I learned to spend a decade building a championship culture to learn how to win, to learn the discipline it takes. But I wish for 20 to 30, I, I would have had great business coaching to, because there's no telling where I would be today. I really didn't start that cycle till my early 30s hmm. and uh, have, have shown tremendous, tremendous growth from 30 to 44. That's awesome. That's awesome. No, great story. And I don't think we, I don't know that you really gave yourself enough credit if you gave this in the story, but like your first championship, you were like 18 years old when you coached. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know how that happened other than just work. Uh, <laughs> it was the prey drive, time. baby. It was the prey drive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I took a group of kids and I took a group of kids and in my very first year, we won a state championship. The only championship the school ever won. And then when I went to the big high school and coached for a decade, I won the first of seven. The, the school would win seven more after I left. And mm. like seven in the next nine years. So I'm really proud of the legacy yeah. that we built. That was a great decade of my life. I it's loved amazing. it. I worked really, really hard to, to build that. And it, and it kind of gave me the foundation I need for today. Congratulations awesome. on all your successes. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Uh, before we close out, let people know how they can follow you, how they can find out more about your coaching program. Yeah, they can go to coachbird.com. I'm still doing live events every month. Uh, I've got some. Incredible ones coming up in January. Flip the switch is the two days with me at my lodge in Tennessee, where I take 30 to 50 people through the activation of Prey Drive. I showed them the activators. I mean, it really, really is a life changing two days. Uh, and then I do one for coaches because uh, I'm, I'm now starting to coach other coaches and how to monetize their coaching business, how to make money coaching. We did uh, 1.3 million in the month of October. We did about 600 thousand in November. So you do almost two million in two months in, in a national pandemic. That's you know, crazy. So you know something. So we're now coaching a lot of people who have a desire to speak, coach, train, lead, and I'm showing them how I went from high school basketball coach to where I am today, and teaching them how to monetize a message. You know, whether they have a book, how they want to speak, they want to coach. So I've got a million dollar coaching summit in July that uh, that a lot of people come to, and then I do my Monster Growth Bootcamp, which is on my selling system. So. Or online academies, uh, coaching programs, coachbird.com. It's awesome. You can see all of them. There's a lot. There's a lot there. Coachbird.com, Bert spelled B U R T.com. And we'll have all those links over on staypaidpodcast.com as well. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, if you're interested in looking for ways to support the show, there's two ways that we ask you to do that. First is to head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a review. Second way is to tell a friend about this yes, podcast, do it. man. What a great, I know you're going to have a great action in here at the end, Luke, yeah, but the idea so. of <laughs> activating your prey drive and then what to do after that's activated and it's intentional. It's not accidental. It doesn't just happen to you. You actually can intentionally activate that. Uh, if you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast.remindermedia.com and you can find us on social media. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acre. And here's what I would encourage you in the action item here is that you need to go back and listen and find out what is it that actually activates your pay drive or prey drive? Is it the competition? Is it the fear of loss? Is it the embarrassment? What is it that truly activates your prey drive? And then here's the action item. The action item is not to think about it one time. The action item is to put it into your morning routine that every morning you go back to one of those items that you know, this gets me going. This activates my pay, prey drive. You heard Josh talk about how he looked at one of our competitors that's kind of ripping us off. I'm not <laughs> going to name their name, but they're ripping us off. But that motivates us, man. We're like ready to go because we see this competitor kind of nipping at our heels 
And so I encourage you to do the same thing. Wake up, add that to your morning routine. Remember this, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single industry Josh and I have worked in is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 